Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. And as we approach the release of Season 7 of The Clone Wars, we'll have lots of Clone Wars content on this channel. So if you're interested, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next. However, today we'll be covering one of the most interesting and also complex aspects of warfare during the Clone Wars, which is clone armor. Now, if you've just watched the movies or only some of the Clone Wars TV show, you might not even have noticed the difference in clone armor. But there was actually a lot of variation to specialized armor given to clone commandos or arc troopers to phase one and phase two clone armor and much more. However, I would wager that no clone has customized his armor as much as the clone we'll be talking about today, and that is Captain Rex. So I'll get to the details of Rex's life in a bit, but first we need a bit of background information. And key to this video is the distinction between Phase 1 and Phase 2 clone armor. Now I've actually covered all of this in a dedicated video, but I'll give you guys the rundown here. Basically clone armor was made, surprisingly, by the Kaminoans, not some outside firm as was the case with the Republic Starfighters and capital ships. Phase 1 clone armor was heavy. It was rigid and uncomfortable, and clones often found it quite unwieldy and even uncomfortable. Still, it offered lots of protection, and it had a uniquely Mandalorian-inspired visor, which really helps distinguish it visually from Phase 2. Phase 2 was rolled out mid-war. It was more ergonomic and comfortable. Clones could more easily move and sit. Generally, the armor was a bit lighter, it was more modular, and it was designed based on the feedback of clones. The Kimi Noans, while being incredibly intelligent, didn't really understand all of the nuances of how humans moved, so some of the issues with Phase 1 were improved with the next generation. We don't know all of the details, including the drawbacks. We do know that Phase 2, as I mentioned, was lighter, so probably offered a little less protection, and it seemed to have stripped down some features. Visually, the best way to tell the two armor sets apart is with the helmet. The T-visor on Phase 1 is sort of narrower and longer, as is the mouth. Additionally, Phase 1 has that large antenna on the top of the head, while the antenna on Phase 2 is much more subdued. It's much more similar to a Stormtrooper's helmet. And that's not an accident, as it's supposed to represent the Republic transitioning into the Empire from an aesthetic sense. Anyway, almost all clones on the battlefield transitioned into Phase 2 when it was released midway through the war, and with that transition we see lots of highly specialized or customized clone sets of armor. However, Captain Rex took it to a whole another level, and Captain Rex was basically Anakin's second in command throughout the war. He was a part of the 501st, which was the clone legion attached to Anakin Skywalker, and depending on the battle, he would lead a company within the 501st first itself, or lead the entire legion. Given his distinctive appearance, including dyed blonde hair, the position of Anakin as probably the most famous Jedi in the galaxy, and Rex's own extremely high level of competence, he was one of the most notable clones during the Clone Wars. From an out of universe perspective, he was also a fan favorite. Because he has so much screen time alongside Anakin, and honestly he survives these crazy situations that he's put into because again of Anakin. Early on in the war and for the first three seasons of the Clone Clone Wars, Rex wears standard Phase 1 armor, although with blue highlights and often sporting a pauldron and a command skirt. However, as clones began to make the shift into Phase 2, Rex did something very interesting. Instead of making the shift, he actually modified his armor to be a mix of both Phase 1 and Phase 2. Now, unless you know your armor, this isn't really clear, but as this concept arc for the Umbaran arc shows, Rex's helmet is actually made up of the Phase 1 visor, the Phase 2 mouthpiece, and the smaller Phase 2 antenna and helmet top. So it's sort of a mix of both generations, which certainly gives a unique visual style. And you can actually see marks on his helmet where he's welded different pieces together, both on the cheeks and the forehead. However, it's not just his helmet which he modified. You can see this in the Clone Wars, but I think it's more clear in various figures of him, as well as Star Wars Rebels, that he's further welded two body pieces together, specifically the chest from one piece and the rest of the body for another. 
Further making his armor unique was the fact that he counted kills on his helmet and the distinctive Mandalorian Jag Eye symbol, which was a mark of honor. But let's return to the melding of two different armor sets together, because to my knowledge Rex is the only one who modified his armor to this extent. We do sometimes see clones using highly specialized armor, and as pointed out by my friend Mel's miniatures, a good example of that would be the helmet worn by clones like Wolf. But with the possible exception of the Bad Batch, who we don't really know a whole lot about yet, no one has done this degree of changes to their armor or their helmet. Why is this? Well, from an out of universe perspective, as I mentioned, Rex was obviously a fan favorite, and also a favorite of Clone Wars creator Dave Filoni. The unique design was a way to keep him unique from other clones, especially Fives, who bore quite a similarity to Rex, especially when he became an ARC trooper. In universe though, there's a lot going on here. We know from Star Wars Rebels that one component Rex kept was the Phase 1 chest plate, and when he's shot in Rebels, he alludes to the fact that the Phase 1 stands up to almost anything. Presumably the Phase 2 doesn't offer that same protection as we mentioned earlier. It's also possible that visor features of the Phase 1 were scaled down, which is why he maintained that element of the mask, but perhaps Phase 2 offered better circulation or breathing filters, which is why he switched that over. Also, by adopting the Phase 2 bodysuit and the general armor, he's able to sort of customize the degree to which he trades off survivability for more comfort and movement. However, Rex has always been an interesting clone to me. When I first watched The Clone Wars, I actually assumed he was an ARC trooper just because he's so often wearing that pauldron and that battle skirt, more so than even other clone captains or commanders. However, he's not explicitly made an ARC Trooper in the show, but canon actually has made him one. ARC Troopers have their own weird armor situation, which I can detail in a later video, perhaps even tomorrow if you're interested. Just let me know if you'd like to learn about that down in the comments. But just to summarize, besides for the visual flair that Rex put into not only his armor, but also his hairstyle, he literally melded Phase 1 and 2 armor together like no one else. Personally, I think the full Phase 2, especially the full Phase 2 ARC Trooper armor looks cooler, but it's nice to have someone who is immediately visually distinctive and has a unique backstory behind their armor. It's also cool that his armor was brought forth into Rebels exactly as it was in the Clone Wars, although other sources have said that he buried it after Order 66. So a little inconsistency there, but still very interesting. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think down below, and as always, have a good one. I'll see you next time, and may the Force be with you.